Your Honor, I have reason to believe that. Okay, so just so you guys know, in the beginning of this, there was a lot of like context. So they're saying that these two down here at the bottom are in the same room. And Deborah could actually see Mary kind of like looking over and doing things. You'll see it a bit here. But so this is the point where Deborah realizes they're in the same room. All right, hold on. I'm going to grab my bottle of wine while this plays. <laughs> The defendant is in the same apartment as the complaining witness right now, and I'm extremely scared for her safety. Miss Lindsay, where are you right now? Um, I'm at a house. Mr. Harris, where are you? 703 East Lafayette, Your Honor. Show me the house number on the house. Um, uh, why? I. I, I don't even think this phone has the charge for that. So I'm at like I'm at like two percent right now. I'm, I'm hooked up to this wall charger right here. Your Honor, We're knocking at the door right now for Miss Lindsay. What? The police are at Miss Lindsay's apartment right now, knocking on the door. All right, Miss Lindsay, would you go answer the door? Dude, what the fuck did they both leave? We may need to adjourn this, Your Honor. We would ask that his bond be canceled. Yeah, so we'll confirm what we're gonna find here. Officer Edgington, which officer is have responded? Uh, I was speaking with Sergeant Marsh. Thank you. Toby. Yes. Your Honor, me and Mary both don't want the oh. no contact. <laughs> I asked if they'll be dropped. I'm sorry I lied to you. I knew the cops were outside. I don't know why I Mr. Lied Harris. Um, uh, my advice is don't say anything else. Take the cigarette out of your mouth. The hearing is adjourned. If you have $10 million, you can't bond out. In addition, the prosecutor is probably also gonna charge you with obstruction of justice. It may be a situation of you and Mary want the bond conditions what lifted, and you want them lifted. All right, don't say any more about it. Your bond is canceled. You're digging your hole. You hit bottom and you're <laughs> continuing to dig. Oh man, so we just saw a great attorney, Deborah, called that shit out. Now, let's take a look at Shamika O'Neill. So Shamika is actually on voice on this call. She's not even on camera. He's saying that he and Ms. O'Neill did it. Please Kurt, let me. Uh, Your please Honor, let me I want to, I, I just want to reiterate. Ms. O'Neill, please do not interrupt me. <laughs> He's saying that they did not discuss that. So would you like some time to speak with your client, Ms. O'Neill? No, ma'am, I wouldn't. I would like to correct Kurt in saying that he is going not for substance abuse it's for mental health treatment he's bipolar schizophrenic ma'am so okay. he says a lot of okay. things he agreed to he agreed to this deal he has it in his hand i, I don't know what we're arguing over <laughs> he's going to treatment good. if it's mental health treatment i'll correct it to say right mental health that's fine but what i'm saying good. is your client is saying he did not understand it that way. It's so what what he's the judge is basically trying to say is that the attorney submitted a plea deal and he didn't understand what exactly the plea deal meant and he just expressed that and so the judge is like, um, did you guys fucking talk about this? Fine. It is fine that he has mental illness, but that doesn't mean that we can go through with a plea if he doesn't understand what he's agreeing to. Now I don't even have no records of me having mental illness. She just putting that diagnose on me. I don't have no mental illness. I'm from Florida. I'm not even Your from Honor, it, Your Honor, it's my motion at this time to withdraw from this case. No, ma'am. That motion is denied. Why? Because he won't accept the plea, and he's going contrary. He won't accept the... Ma'am, I've been to the jail five times. He's flooding the toilets. He's causing disturbances. He's fighting. He's been beat up. He's You're calling me 12 you times a day. disparaging your client to this court. Oh, my God. Okay, that's, well, that's, the that's bottom that's line that's is, I, I, my, my, advice, my advice to him, ma'am, is to take the deal. If he's not going to do that, then I'm withdrawing from this case. Ma I've already been to the jail five times, Your Honor, to talk to him. The withdrawal is denied. I bet I don't appear again. Goodbye. Okay. Oh my I was God. To make oh my God. I'm sorry. Can I get a fucking slow mo for everyone's reaction here? I'm sorry. I'm dead ass putting this bitch on slow mo. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I bet I don't appear again. Goodbye. <laughs> okay. I would like to.
should have made a contempt motion. Oh my god. And that is how you get contempt of court. <laughs> motion for Miss O'Neill. Oh my god. <laughs> Tracy, look, I Tracy said. Order compelling her appearance oh. in front of this court tomorrow. <laughs> Former judge Tracy dragged out of courtroom, ordered to serve six months in jail. Why would she get six months in jail? Why did the judge get six months? I guess what happened was her brother was, he worked for the courts and he was in the process of getting fired. So she handed over some documents to him that she wasn't supposed to do. Yeah, she gave confidential shit to her brother. They all did their duty and now it's my turn. To follow, the, follow my oath, okay. to pull the rule of law. In this case, the law certainly- Is that her? Is that the judge? I believe, I'm believe sorry. justice, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, um, just one sec. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, oh my God, is she just gonna leave? What are we doing here, Mr. Singleton? Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. Um, what is she gave doing? her an opportunity to speak and that was turned down. It's not being offered now. Oh my God. Please have a seat. So you're denying my right as a defendant to address the court? Ma'am, please have a seat. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you, ma'am. Oh my God. Oh, I'm getting nervous. The record should reflect again. You were offered an opportunity to speak. And you turned that down. As indicated in the judgment entry by Judge Nadel, number one, you pay the cost of these proceedings. Number two, you are to do not violate any laws. And number three, you are to do six months in the Hamilton County Justice Center. Credit one day. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Deputies can take her away. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And volume, sorry, that was real loud. Oh, they said take her away, and everyone just freaked out. Is that hold on? Oh, 40 seconds? Oh, shit! Oh my god, the whole family got up. Oh, my, oh no! Hold on, this is a little. I just heard somebody yell, She's passed out. This woman is fully. They just. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. This looks to me like they just, they, it's like a choice at this point where if you're not gonna use your feet, we're gonna drag you like she's. Oh my God, honestly, honestly, that would be me. That would be me. That's me. That's me, bitch. I didn't do it. Look at her face. So let's, so this is the state of Florida versus Aaron Robinson. Basically what I know of this is this is an assault case where it, it seems like there was a jealous lover situation and he beat this dude to death. Members of the jury, on August 11th, 2014, one person died. One Go game! Thank you. That defendant, Aaron Robinson. Aaron Robinson was upset. He went to the victim, Raul Ortiz's house, to get in a fight. She saw Raul Ortiz get beaten. Mango Astro, thank you. So beaten that his entire face was swollen, both eyes swollen shut. Did she call the police? And when they went to go try to resuscitate him, they had to pull his teeth out of his throat. <gasps> You're then going to hear from Deputy Donald Hess. Oh my who first God! Scene, and he'll describe the scene to you. How there's blood on the grass. How the victim looked. You'll get to see those pictures. Okay, so violent tendencies that stem from something seemingly small, not knowing what's going on, blacking out or amnesia in that sense. If he if he really did black out, I could see that because there's a thing called disassociative amnesia that comes with trauma. It's where basically people that don't know how to deal with their emotions, which clearly he was never taught how to deal with his anger. Um, they there's sometimes there's feelings that are so overwhelming for them, or maybe they remind them of something in their past and they disassociate when they feel that feeling. A lot of people that are victims of like PTSD or trauma, some people may disassociate when they feel extreme shame because shame is something that a lot of us actually felt when we were even like children. Uh, children get shamed a lot. This, um, when he left this is property, the defendant. He saw the victim he's, on the ground. He's alive. The other guy that is he not was in trouble. here. And he needed to leave, come up with a story. Something that would make sense to explain the extent of these injuries. You're also going to have, in addition to her testimony, 
You're going to have the physical evidence. You're going to be able to see exactly where Raul Ortiz ultimately came to rest after the fight. And what you're going to find is that is just right inside the fence line, not deep into his property, <laughs> just inside the fence line. They, okay, I'm, well, hold on. I'm fucking sorry. If somebody got mad at me and then came to my house to beat my ass, she's basically saying, now hold on guys, he didn't step over the concrete. He was just on the concrete. He didn't get in the grass. Just on the concrete. Bitch, you came to my house to beat my ass. Period. That's that's what happened. That Sir? You're going to see That's honestly, her defense? You're going to see a shirt that Raul Ortiz was wearing earlier in the Circle K. And you're going to see where that shirt was thrown. Because the judge is going to give you instructions on the law in this case. And there are two things... Um, that I'm going to ask you to pay close attention to, which are going to be one, justifiable homicide. Is th that's what we're going for? Okay. And two, excusable homicide. Why? Are you Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, I was having trouble understanding the difference between manslaughter and justifiable homicide, which she's claiming. I just looked this up. Pfft, manslaughter would be, oh, they got into a fight, nobody had weapons, but somebody died. Um, that's manslaughter. Justifiable homicide are no-fault homicides. They involve ordinarily the death of someone others under circumstances of necessity or duty. So, for example, self-defense capital punishment or a police shooting that's that's what that's what we're gonna try to climb today okay in the interview that we just watched mr diaz asked you about it about a brick um and your your words he didn't like mr. that robinson were something to the effect of when did you pick up the brick does that sound fair yes oh. ma'am that's sort of an interview tactic or strategy that he had a weapon to kind of you know almost accusing Mr. Robinson to see if you can catch him off guard and, you know, him say, oh, I picked it up when this happened. Is that fair to say? No. Yes, it's it's a... No. Um, um, they're focusing, like, well, I guess the information has to be admitted into court, so they can't really say a lot about past stuff. I bet you this guy's got a little bit of a history, a little uh, anger issues. Post says some things and perhaps looks down her shirt, Okay. It only lasts. Oh, this is the clip. Seconds. This but it's is all it. caught on video at the Circle K. This is the video now, that. Let's take a look at this moment. There you see the girlfriend. She's the one with the tank That's top. Kayla. Keep your eye on the right side of the screen. You will see the victim in this case. Okay. Approach her. Here he comes. Glances over at her. And he's gone. That's what y'all killed this man over? To me, it didn't look like he said anything. He just looked like he was creepily looking. But this headline says, ex-girlfriend admits she lied about sexual comments made by victim. Yeah. Stand over here for help, I'm sorry. Thank you. Can we agree that out of all the people involved, so this is you the were girlfriend. in the best position to know if this was all making a fuss about? Yes. I mean, you were the person that was there at the Circle K earlier with Raul. Yes. You knew exactly how bad or not bad that situation was. Yes. You oh. were the person who could have said, honey, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not a big deal. Let it go. This is really getting out of hand. Yes. And you knew that the entire way as all this is progressing. She already has it. And it's your position that in those 10 seconds, he was looking at you inappropriately and saying inappropriate things to you? I felt uncomfortable, yes. Okay, and I understand uh, you felt uncomfortable. But now looking back... Push on that. Now that you're not in the moment... You agree he's not like leaning on Funky his boss. And trying to stare down your shirt, right? No, he wasn't. I never said he was. You agree that what really happens is he comes in, he leans in as if trying to talk to the clerk. He then looks at you, realizing he's too close. And the first thing he does is he actually kind of backs away from you. Isn't that what happens? Yes. Yes, that's what happens. When he looks at you and realizes he's so close, he actually backs away. That's what happens. Right? 
He didn't make a motion to touch you. No, he didn't touch He you. didn't try and touch your breasts. No. He I mean... didn't stand staring at you, fixated on your chest, did he? No. So clearly, he's not saying anything sexual to you if he's talking about cigarettes, right? No. In fact, the very next thing that happens as he walks away is he yells to the clerk, she's too young to buy them, isn't that? Yes. So he's trying to tell the clerk not to sell you cigarettes because he thinks you're buying cigarettes. Oh, my God. There's nothing sexual happening in this moment, is there? No. You knew that. Sure. But you still... How come every answer we get from her until she gets told she's lying is yes, and then now we get the sure? And it's also interesting to me because I feel like that moment when he was staring at her was gross, 100%. I've been there before. It's made me uncomfortable. I've left the store and then told a friend, holy shit, this is what happened. But I'm starting to almost feel as though um, maybe she felt slighted by him making a comment about her ability to buy cigarettes and coupled with the discomfort that she felt. And so she felt very fuck that guy and maybe embellished the story a little bit. Sounds like that's what they're going to get to here. Now. The day progresses, you meet up with Aaron, you tell Aaron this. Can we agree that Aaron's response to you telling him is to get mad? He didn't, he got a little upset, but I wouldn't say mad really. We know why he was killed. Because Kayla Bryant told her boyfriend an exaggeration, mm. a gross exaggeration. And she did that knowing that her boyfriend had a hair trigger temper that could result in him blacking out when the rage monster takes over. The why has been answered. Damn. Damn. Can we come to the how? Damn. Yes. That was good. How is, that was good. How do you I think what we're finally getting now in this regret is he was in a state of mind when he was fighting, when he pulled up to the guy's house, when he murdered him, and whatever thing from his past he was revisiting, he is no longer visiting. He is fully in the present receiving his sentence. So it's gonna hurt. It's really, really gonna hurt because your trauma can't save you now. You need to take care of your trauma before it gets to this point. committed battery against Raul Ortiz? Yes. Was the structure entered a dwelling? Yes. We the jury? As to count three of the indictment, find as follows. The defendant is not guilty. So say we all date to this 22nd day of October, 2020. Mr. Simansky, for person of the jury. Juror number one, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number two, is this your true Guilty of murder, not guilty of burglary? Is that what I'm getting? Juror number three, is this your true and correct verdict? Juror number four, is He's this your true and correct verdict? He's tuned out at this point. He can't hear yes. anything going on. Juror number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Y'all know the six, movies where everything just gets hazy and there's like a, everything's blurry and ever, all the voices are muted. That's what's happening to Aaron right Juror now. Juror number eight, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number nine, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 10, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 11, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. And juror number 12, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much again for your time and your commitment to this case this week. Um, it is after 6 o'clock, and you've been working very hard, um, not only today, but all week long. And as I told you on Monday, and you've now seen Ooh. firsthand. Felony murder is a legal rule that expands the definition of murder. It applies when someone commits a certain kind of felony and someone else dies in the course of it. It doesn't matter whether the death was intentional or accidental. The defendant is liable for it. Yes, she knew he was going down for that. The rule is usually limited to felonies that are inherently foreseeable, dangerous to human life, such as arson, robbery, and burglary. Very interesting.